A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message I tell you. So Jonah set out, and he went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The Word of the Lord. Please join me in reading a portion of Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O God, for you repay everyone according to his deeds.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets, and they followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boats mending their nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed him. The Word of the Lord. Today's Gospel passage marks the beginning of Jesus' public ministry in that it contains his first public pronouncements, his first and shortest sermon, so to speak. Jesus says, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And what immediately precedes this sermon in Mark's Gospel? Not his baptism, not his temptation in the wilderness, it's the arrest of John the Baptist. And the very first words Jesus pronounces after we hear that John has been arrested are, the time is fulfilled. Does Jesus mean by this simply that the Messiah has arrived? Biblical scholar Ralph Jacobson has suggested that in fact, this pronouncement might be a reaction to John's arrest that it might be Jesus's way of saying, enough of this injustice, it's time for me to speak out. Who knows if it really was the arrest of John that catalyzed Jesus's public ministry, but it wouldn't have been the first time that a prophet's mission was brought into being by witnessing injustice, and it wouldn't be the last. In last week's sermon, Reverend Hilton spoke of the arrest of Rosa Parks in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955 for refusing to vacate her bus seat for a white man as the event that brought the public ministry of Martin Luther King Jr. into being. And this past week, we witnessed the inauguration of our new president, Joe Biden. Before being elected as our 46th president in November, Biden had run for the presidency twice before, not gotten very far either time. He chose not to run in 2016 as he was in deep grief over the recent death of his son. He thought at the time that his opportunity to serve as president had passed. After all, were he to run in 2020, he would become president at age 78. No one had ever done that before. Ronald Reagan was not yet 70 when he became president. President Biden said that it was his predecessor's statement that there were fine people among the white supremacists that gathered in Charlottesville, Virginia in, the, in August of 2017 that motivated him to enter the 2020 presidential race. President Biden had thought that his time in public service had passed until he realized that the time instead had been fulfilled. Those two previous races that he had lost had not meant that he would not be president, but that he would be called upon at a different time, perhaps when his deep well of empathy would be most needed by the American people. But hindsight is, of course, 2020. How do we know when the time is fulfilled for us to start something new? And how can we discern the rightness of any direction we take? Although it became so widespread a decade or two ago, it was easy to parody, asking 
what would Jesus do is still good counsel. And if we can ask and answer, what did Jesus do? Well, even better. The challenge for us in that is that the Bible doesn't tell us much about Jesus before the words we hear from him today. In fact, all we have of his formative years is a story from the second chapter of Luke, when Jesus was 12 and his parents found him in the temple speaking with the teachers. If it was the arrest of John that spurred Jesus into action in today's reading from Mark, we are left to speculate as to why that was. And then there are examples of, quote, time being fulfilled that are sinister in nature. When a riotous mob attacked our nation's capital two weeks ago, the rioters felt that the time was fulfilled to do something, something that was hateful and deadly. Whether or not it was the former president's speech that caused the riot that day, the mob was made up of people who had long nursed grievances and resentments. And that may be where we need to look, not at the precipitating event, but the conditions that led to it. Because it wasn't just Rosa Parks' arrest on that December day in 1955 that drew Dr. King into leading the civil rights movement for the next 12 years was 80 years of Jim Crow apartheid and racist violence leading up to that point. Nor was it simply the arrest of John the Baptist that caused Jesus to begin his ministry. Nor had it been any one thing that caused the prophets of old to call for justice and compassion for God's people. In his inaugural address this week, President Biden quoted St. Augustine as saying that a people are defined by what they love. Well, perhaps we can add to that, if one is cheeky enough to add to the words of St. Augustine, by saying that a people are defined by what they love and what they aspire to. Dr. King aspired to build a community that would judge people not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Jesus aspired to draw the people closer to God, to heal the sick, and to lift up those who have been cast down. For the first chapter and a half of Mark's Gospel, we don't see Jesus teaching a thing. He heals. A person possessed by a demon, another with a fever, another with leprosy, another who is paralyzed. He heals them all. He relieves their suffering. That was front and center in Christ's ministry as it was in Dr. King's. Especially in this time of pandemic, it should be in ours too. There may be some event or person or epiphany that sets you on a new path, just as we may have seen in Mark's Gospel today. The decision to start down that path should be rooted in love of God and God's people. Will walking this path before me help me support and care for God's people? And if only in some way, lessen suffering in this world. In the words of National Youth, Poet, National Youth Poet Laureate Amanda Gorman in her poem, The Hill We Climb, which she recited at this week's inauguration, we're walking this path, quote, seek harm to none and harmony for all. If the answer is yes, Maybe you don't need a motivating event at all. Maybe the time has already been fulfilled. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let us pray to God whose kingdom has come near. We pray for the church called like Jonah to preach God's word. May it faithfully proclaim to the world the gospel of Jesus. Lord of light, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those consumed by work and possessions. May they realize that the appointed time is short and use it to grow in love. Lord of light, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those whom God has called to serve in ministry. 
May they respond eagerly as followers of Christ and fishers of people. Lord of light, hear our prayer. prayer. Remember all those commended to our prayers. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Lord of light, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those suffering from the, from the coronavirus, either through illness, loneliness, unemployment, or anxiety. For all those caring for the sick, those seeking treatments and vaccines for the virus, and all those whose work places them in harm's way. May this pandemic depart from the face of the earth, and may those who suffer in its wake be healed. Lord of light, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who have passed beyond this present world. May they live in the fullness of God's time and the joy of God's kingdom. Lord of light, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. I pray for Joseph and Kamala, that they may lead our nation into new and great things. I pray for Nathan, that he remains safe defending the Capitol. And we pray for a healthy birth of Mackenzie Nevart McConaughey. We pray for all this in the words our Savior Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our oh, Father, Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God.